Your lesson essential question is how are key details in a scientific text connected? So again this week we are looking at scientific texts and you know that a scientific text is an informational text so it gives information about a scientific topic. So you might have a text about plants or animals or life cycles or outer space maybe the human body, gravity, so anything about sci a scientific topic. And again this week we're talking about those key details and how they're connected. So key details you know are the most important details in the text. So how are they connected? We know that key details in informational texts are connected in specific ways. We've been focusing on sequence, and we've been focusing a little bit on cause and effect. We've talked about some of those key words that we look for in the text, and also those key words that we use in our writing when we're explaining the text. So maybe we don't always see the key words, but we are using them when we're talking about or writing about the text. So when we're talking and when we're looking for and talking about connections, we need to make sure that we're first reading the text. Then we want to identify how the key details are related to each other. So you know we're not working on compare and contrast quite yet. We will be later in the year. But right now we're talking about cause and effect and sequence. We record our key details into a graphic organizer showing how they're related. And I do have graphic organizers for you today in our lesson, so we'll be doing those together. And then you're going to use those connections. So again, we're only talking about cause and effect in sequence right now. We're going to use those connections to explain the text and explain the connections. So. You'll be using these specific words again in your in your discussion posts this week and in your writing this week. Since it's finally October, we are going to be reading about pumpkin boats this week. So this is called Grow, Grow, Grow Your Boat, and we are going to be reading about how to grow a giant pumpkin to make a boat out of it. So you're going to notice I have two graphic organizers for you today. This one up here shows sequence, and this one's where we'll be talking about compare the cause and effect that we come across as we're reading. So, how to grow a giant or how to grow a pumpkin boat. If you want a pumpkin boat, you need to grow a giant pumpkin first. It takes a lot of work. Start with a seed. A, seed, a giant pumpkin grows from a seed, but not just any pumpkin seed will grow into a giant giant. You must plant a seed that comes from a giant pumpkin. These seeds can be very expensive. One seed can cost as much as $1,600. So what is the first thing that we need to do if we want to grow a giant pumpkin? You're right, we need to plant a seed that comes from a giant pumpkin first. All right, this next heading says add water. Next, you'll need to add wa you'll need to water your pumpkin seed. Giant pumpkins need a lot of water. Farmers may give giant pumpkin plants 3 whole barrels of water a day. So, I actually see a sequence word here. Next, and that gives me a clue as to the next important step. So first we plant the seed, next we water the seed. Give it extra care. Your giant pumpkin shouldn't get too hot or too cold. You'll need to give it extra care. So now we need to make sure we're caring for our pumpkin. I want to ask you, why are we giving our pumpkin plant three whole barrels of water a day? Because that seems like a lot. So 
So we're watering our pumpkin with three barrels of water a day because it needs a lot of water. So because pumpkins need a lot of water, we want to make sure we're watering our pumpkins with three barrels of water a day. This right here is continued. This first, these first two paragraphs are continued from the give it extra care section. You'll need to give your pumpkin shade from the sun during the day. If it gets too hot, it might blow up. You'll also need to keep it cool to keep it from getting too cold at night. Cover it with a blanket. Sweet dreams, giant pumpkin. So I know that I need to give my pumpkin extra care, but how do I do that? All right, so you probably said we need to give our pumpkin shade and we also need to keep it from getting too cold. I think it's important to include that in our graphic organizer because when you say give it extra care, you don't really know what is meant by that unless we include those details. So it's important to say give it shade and keep it from getting it too cold. Now I know what it means to give my pumpkin extra care. All right, the next section is called Carve the Pumpkin. After a few months, your hard work is done. Your pumpkin is all grown. If you're lucky, it will be big enough to be a boat. Now it's time to carve the pumpkin. It won't take too long. Giant pumpkins are mostly hollow. That means they are mostly empty inside. Scoop all the slimy guts out of the pumpkin. Don't throw it all out. You'll want to save the seeds so that you can grow another giant pumpkin. So I know that first I need to plant the seed, then water it, and I know I need to give my pumpkin extra care by giving it shade and keeping it from getting too cold. Now what do I do? All right, you probably said carve your pumpkin. I see some sequence words here after a few months. So that kind of gives me an idea of how long it takes to grow this pumpkin. Do you see a sequence word in this paragraph? You probably pointed out the word now. So now it's time to carve our pumpkin. So the next step is carving the pumpkin. Let's see what our last step is. Paddle your boat. It's finally time to race. Put on a fun costume. Climb into your pumpkin boat. Don't tip over into the water. Then get ready. Get set and paddle. You might not win your first pumpkin race, but you already did something incredible. You grew a giant pumpkin. So what is the last thing that we need to do? You probably said, finally, get in your boat and paddle in the race. I have a little typo. Okay. Let's talk about some cause and effect from this page. If it gets too hot, what could happen? I'm going to have you figure that out by rereading this paragraph. All right, so I see the word if here, and that shows me that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about a cause and effect relationship. If it gets too hot, you probably answered with, it might blow up. So what happens if it gets too hot? It could blow up. So the cause of it getting too hot is the cause is it gets too hot, the effect is it might blow up.
why won't the pumpkin take too long to carve? So this is our effect. It does not take long to carve, but I want to know why. All right, you probably pointed out this paragraph here. It won't take too long to carve because it's hollow inside. Let's talk about this word hollow. Hollow might be a new word for you, but sometimes there are context clues or clues in the paragraph that help us figure out the meaning of an unknown word. So, this one actually gives you the definition after we read the word. It says that means they are mostly empty inside. So hollow means that it's empty inside. So the context clue here is the definition is listed for us, which is really awesome because now we understand this paragraph more. All right. Why are we saving the seeds for our pumpkin? You probably found in this paragraph up here, we're saving our seeds so that we can grow another pump, giant pumpkin. And this word so is telling me that we're growing another pumpkin because of something. Why are we growing another pumpkin? Because we've saved the seeds. All right, you guys are going to be answering one question today about one piece of cause and effect from this text. We're gonna be using this text for a few days now. So um, you're gonna be, today you're answering one question and later in the week you're gonna be doing some writing with this text.